Hello there. On behalf of Bethel Lutheran Church in Bay City, Michigan, welcome to this time of worship and praise. This video is for the fourth week after Pentecost. The work of the gospel is invisible, but real. It is hidden, but with results that can be seen, even if the power behind those visible results remains a mystery. That is true of the kingdom of God, the church. It is no less true of the kingdom of God hidden within the individual member of the church. Faith that is the result of the living seed of the word is alive and gives evidence of its life. Let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us confess our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of that forgiveness, let us praise the Lord with the hymn, Forever with the Lord. splendid, how beautiful the outward and the visible dwelling place that God has given us for a moment before it decays and crumbles into dust. If the visible seems to us so precious, how precious must be that which for the present is still invisible. Nothing of the visible tent is sure or durable. Only the invisible abides forever. We read 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 1 through 10. Now we know that if the earthly tent that we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, 
not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose, and has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. This is the word of our God. Let us pray. O God, protector of all the faithful, you alone make strong, you alone make holy. Show us your mercy and forgive our sins day by day. Guide us through our earthly lives that we do not lose the things you have prepared for us in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing the hymn, Almighty God, Your Word is Cast. We want to give careful thought and consideration to our next portion of God's Word. We read the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 29. He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. This is the gospel of our Lord. Dear friends in Christ, are you growing? I don't mean tall, and I don't mean wide. I don't mean professionally or academically or in any earthly way. I mean spiritually. Do you feel that your faith is blossoming? Or do you feel stuck in the ground? Today Jesus tells us a parable, a little story from earth with a heavenly meaning. With this parable, Jesus describes the kingdom of God. He tells us how God grows his kingdom and how God grows our faith. Growing starts with a seed. Spiritual growth begins with the seed of the gospel. Jesus encourages each of us to sow the seed of the gospel. We do that to sprout new life, to mature in faith, and then to produce fruit. 
Jesus compares the kingdom of God to a man sowing seed. He said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Now, before a man scatters seed, he has to decide what he wants to grow. If a farmer wants to grow corn, he plants corn seed. If you want to grow beans or tomatoes or whatever other vegetables you want for your garden, well, you plant those bean seeds or corn seeds or tomato seeds or, or what have you. If we want to grow spiritually, we need to plant spiritual seeds. And the only seed that grows faith is the gospel. Now, God was the one who first planted that seed in you and I. When God first looks at us, he sees nothing but weeds. Weeds look like they're living. And they probably think they are living, but weeds, in the end, choke out life. And then eventually, they're uprooted and destroyed. Spiritually, on our own, we're the weeds. Seeded by two sinful parents, we're born in sin. On our own, we have only the capacity to, well, to, to do those things that are displeasing to our God. And eventually, left to our sin, we ourselves would be uprooted and destroyed in hell. God turned us from dying weeds into growing seeds by planting the seed of his son. Jesus was born as the promised seed of the woman. He came to give life and turn dying weeds into growing seeds by taking their place. He was uprooted from heaven and replanted on earth to die on the cross and suffer hell. Like a seed, he was buried in the grave, but he rose from the dead and brought forth life. Jesus now gives us life by sowing the seed of the gospel in our hearts. Just as God created the things by the word of his mouth, so also Jesus creates spiritual life by his word. When he speaks and sows the seed of the gospel, that word creates life. The gospel message that Jesus died in our place turns us from dying weeds into growing seeds. The seed of the gospel grows in our hearts all by itself. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. Spiritual life comes only from the gospel. We can work out to, to give better physical life to our bodies. We can study books to, to give better mental life to our brains, but the only way we can find spiritual life is to, to sow the seed of the gospel. We don't really know how it works, just that it works. When we plant seeds in the ground, we don't really know how they grow, they just grow. Likewise, God promises that the seed of his gospel will grow, will sprout new life. If we want to grow spiritually, if we want to live, Jesus encourages us to sow the seed of the gospel. Every time we hear his word, our faith will grow. Every time a parent brings a child to baptism, every time we read God's word at home, every time we remember a Bible passage, every time we sow the seed of the gospel, that seed will grow. And as we continue to sow the seed of the gospel, that seed slowly matures in faith. When the farmer has to wait for his seed to grow, he may want to make his plant grow faster, but the seed grows at its own pace. Of course, the farmer does his best to prevent the plant's death. He waters and feeds the plant. He keeps weeds away. But in the end, he cannot make the plant grow. He simply waits as the plant matures through its stages. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. So also, we must wait patiently as the gospel matures in our hearts. Like the farmer, we can do a few things to keep this new life from dying. We know that weeds can choke things off, and we used to be weeds ourselves. And too often, even after we have new life from the gospel, we can go back at times to, to living like weeds. It's not who we are, but we, we do those things. We, we can start to think that we, we know what's best for our life rather than listening to, to God's plan for us. We might be more concerned about how our bodies look on the outside or how much earthly knowledge we can attain or how many things we can accomplish in life. We forget about the eternal life that God has waiting for us. We forget about his word that gives us life. It's usually the time that we begin to feel like we're not growing because the reality is we're not. If we want to keep growing toward maturity and faith, then we'll ask God to keep sowing the seed of the gospel in our hearts. He often brings us from shoot to stalk to full kernel, well, through confession and absolution. 
Every time we confess our sins of caring more about physical life than spiritual life, it's like pulling up the weeds. Every time we hear again that Jesus died on the cross to forgive our sins, God strengthens our roots a little more. Every time we confess and receive forgiveness, our faith grows towards maturity. And the more our faith grows, the more our fruit faith will produce. That farmer can't wait until his seed finally produces fruit. He spent so much time planting the seeds, pulling the weeds, and feeding the plant, he, he just wants to enjoy it. And as soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest is come. The farmer waits until the grain is ready. If he pulls it off too early, it won't be any good. And if he waits too long, it, it won't be its best either. At just the right time, the farmer harvests his crop, and he enjoys it. God wants us to enjoy the fruits of faith that we have to offer, and he wants us to enjoy them too. Paul talks about one of those fruits in our, our other lesson from 2 Corinthians. After reminding us that God has prepared a heavenly dwelling for us and given us his spirit as a deposit, Paul says about us, therefore we're always confident. One of the fruits of growing mature faith is confidence. When God sows the seed of the gospel, we live in complete confidence of our eternal future. Regardless of the weeds and other obstacles that face us in this life, we remain confident that our home is in heaven. Regardless of the many times we live as weeds ourselves, we remain confident that Jesus died for all of our sins. Regardless of how we feel about our own faith, we remain confident that the seeds of the gospel will continue to strengthen us until Jesus takes us home to heaven. Another fruit of growing mature faith is a living a God-pleasing life. The more the seed of the gospel strengthens us, the more we'll be able to resist the temptations of the devil. The stronger our faith grows, the more we'll want to let Christ rule our hearts rather than trying to rule ourselves. The more mature our faith becomes, the more everything we do will give glory to God. Finally, as the seed of the gospel produces fruit in us, we will sow that seed as well. The point of Jesus' parable is to teach us how God grows his kingdom. And he grows his kingdom one seed at a time by sowing that seed of the gospel. And once he's planted that seed in one soul, he wants that soul to plant another seed and another seed and another. The best place to start planting more seeds is with your family. Think of a, a child, a grandchild, aunt, an uncle, a cousin. Sow that seed of the gospel with them. Teach them that they are weeds destined for the fire pit. Then tell them how God planted Jesus on this earth to die in our place. When he rose from the dead, he brought forth life and gives it to them, just as he's given it to us. And with God's help, we help them mature into a growing seed by daily confessing sin with them and, and offering them God's forgiveness. Are we growing? If we feel stuck on the ground, it's time to ask God to sow the seed of the gospel in you. Ask him to continue to sow it as he already has. Ask him to continue to give you life and faith that grows into maturity and produces fruit. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all human understanding, guard and keep your heart and your mind through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having heard the word of our God, we confess Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Living Lord and risen Savior, accept my alleluias and increase my joy that comes from knowing that you have risen from the dead. Comfort me with the assurance that my sins are forgiven and eternal life in heaven is sure. Let the joy of the message of eternal life lead me to go and tell the good news of your resurrection to the people who don't know of your love and grace. Let the light of my faith in you shine brightly as I face each day in the future and the day of my death on earth. I ask this in your name, who rose for me. Amen. And hear me as I pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for spending this time with us today, taking some time out of your day to spend it with the Lord. We, we pray that it helped you to remember that, that even though at times the, the work of the gospel is invisible, is real, and it is at work within us. May the Lord bless your day and your week. We close today with the hymn, On What Has Now Been Sown. 